Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the W3 caching plugin on your WordPress site to try to help improve its speed. Sometimes speed just can't be improved because often it depends on your hosting environment. So if you're on a shared hosting platform and you happen to be sharing your hosting space with other high traffic websites, there's almost no way you can improve your own speed significantly because the other sites are using so much of the host bandwidth. But you can still do as much as you can. And the W3 caching plugin does help with that. And if you are concerned that your shared hosting might be slowing you down, you can look at dedica dedicated hosting servers or even a different host like WP Engine, which doesn't share hosting and they're optimized for WordPress. But with the W3 caching plugin, you'll be able to get some site speed improvements. And why do you want to improve site speed? Well, there's two reasons primarily. One, your visitors like a fast website, and it's been proven that the faster your site loads, especially for e-commerce sites, the faster it loads, the more money you make. And Google has site speed as one of the ranking factors for ranking website pages. So the faster your site goes, the better your site will rank. Theoretically, so this plugin is free. There, there, there is a paid version, but the free version does a whole lot. So the first thing we have to do is log into our WordPress dashboard, hover over plugins on the left, and then click on Add New, and then type in W3 Cache in the search bar, and it's the first one right here. And if it's already installed, that's great. But if it's not installed on your site, there'll be an Install Now button. Click on that, and then activate the plugin. And what it does is well, that's some warnings up here, first of all, which we'll get rid of in a second. But what it does is it adds a new link at the bottom called Performance. And we want to hover over that and click on General Settings. The dashboard is really just one big upsell to the paid version. So you really only have to go into the General Settings to set up your, your plugin. And the reason these uh, we have these warnings is because Currently, they are checked to be turned on, but we don't have uh, other stuff enabled for them to function. And we're going to go through each option right now. So you can toggle them all on, all the options that we're going to go through by clicking this checkbox and then clicking Save. And that will turn on every kind of site speed improvement function the free version has. Or you can go through each one by one. So the page cache, basically you store a hard copy version of a page on your server with the page cache. Um, with the WordPress sites, it's what's called a dynamic website, a database-driven website. So normally, every time someone visits a page, the server makes a request to the database, which then sends the information back to the website. Whereas with the page caching, that request is done once, and that resulting page is then stored on the server. So then the next time a visitor visits the same page, it can be any visitor, not the same one, anybody visits that same page, that page is already stored on the server and you don't have to request the copy from the database. So there's some site improve or some speed improvement by doing that. The minify option, basically what that does is it removes white space and extraneous characters from your CSS files and JavaScript files. Those files are usually requested every time someone accesses a, accesses a page. So reducing that file size means there's less bandwidth your site has to use to get that data to the visitor which results in faster load times. And there's a bunch of other options in here related to that, but really the only one you have to do is click on Enable, and then click on Save All Settings. These get into quite advanced stuff. Even this uh, page caching method, it gets fairly advanced in the options, so just stick with what they have by default because that works in 99% of the cases. So just enable it if you want that option enabled, and then click on Save Settings. Don't worry about the options unless you're an advanced user. And then the next one is a database cache, the same idea. You're basically caching queries. So a, a cache is like a storage area. I should have defined that earlier. A cache is like a, a storage repository for frequently used items. So for the database cache, you're actually storing uh, queries to the database in a cache, which means they don't have to be recreated, recreated every time. You can just use the stored queries and it goes faster. The object cache goes a little bit further. It also reduces execution time for common operations and it's really rather valuable for dynamic websites like a WordPress site. Browser cache 
is where a lot of the data is stored on the visitor's browser. Browsers by default cache websites. So if you go to your favorite website today, you might go there again tomorrow. It might look the same as yesterday. That's because you have a cached version and you have to refresh the page. And that cached version is stored in your browser. And people who have never cleared their cache on their computers can actually really slow down their computers because the cache can grow so big if it's, if it's let to grow out of control and you do a lot of browsing on the internet, clearing that cache can clear up a lot of hard drive space. So this browser caching option further lets your website store a bit more information on the user's browser so it's faster for the user to access data on your website because it's right on their machine. A CDN, CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. Basically that's where you'd store files related to, usually related to media, but you can store theme files, media library attachments like images, videos, PDFs. Um, by the way, you don't really want to store videos in your media files. If you, if you, if you can avoid it, you want to host them on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, CDN can also store CSS files, JavaScript files. Any files that are called in via PHP command can be stored remotely on a CDN. And those CDNs, they're often distributed on servers worldwide. So if there's a visitor going to your site and they're from China, they can access, or their website, their browser, will access the CDN in China, the server in China, and that will lead to faster response times because the data doesn't have to go as far. The reverse proxy option you don't have to worry about at the moment. The monitoring option is a, a paid service from New Relic. So you probably don't have to worry about that right now. You can disable that. And basically it just monitors your website activity and load times. And then the next field is licensing for the plugin itself. So if you buy a license, this is where you'd store the license. And then there's some miscellaneous options that aren't involved with the caching functionality, but can help you get more data. For example, the Google PageSpeed dashboard widget, if you want to include one of those. You have to then get the API key. We don't want to use that right now. Uh, we don't need to verify the rewrite rules right now. And then after you've checked all the settings you want, just click on save all changes and all changes are saved. And there's a whole bunch of messages up here. I like to just get rid of them because often they persist. Total cache does add a lot of messages to the, the top area of your site, which can be pretty annoying. And that's all there is for the basic setup of the W3 Total Cache plugin which will hopefully improve your site speed. But like I said earlier, your site speed also depends on if you're on shared hosting and the other people who are sharing that hosting with you. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Alpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video if it helped, share it on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out wplearninglab.com where I write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.